What's up guys? This is Brent with Western Equipment. Now let's jump right on in and start talking about this Z530R. In the model number here, what we've got is the Z530R. So let's break that down. Z is going to stand for zero turn. As you can see, this is a zero turn mower. Then we're gonna have the five. This is going to be the family indicator of the mower. So within the zero turn lineup, we're gonna have Z3s, Z5s, Z7s, and Z9s. So this is going to be that second tier of zero turn in the zero turn lineup from John Deere. Now, the next two digits, these are going to be your engine indicator. So this has a 30 in it, meaning that this is going to be a Kawasaki engine. And then the last letter in that is going to be the R. So just like in a lot of other John Deere equipment, we're gonna have that last letter there as a trim level indicator. And in the Z5 lineup, you are going to have an E trim level, which is more your base trim level model, an M trim level, which is more mid spec. It's gonna have a few more features and then the R like we have here that is going to have the most amount of features that you can get in this class of mower. Now in the Z5 lineup you are going to have four different models. A Z515E, a Z530M, Z530R and a Z545R. So this is the Z530. It is in that upper side of that Z5 lineup. So now let's move to the back of the mower, start talking about the engine and the transaxles and then where the service points are gonna be at on these engine. So what engine we're gonna have in this machine, as you look right here on top, you are gonna see a 24 horsepower, but this is going to be a Kawasaki engine. So if you look over here on the right-hand side towards the back, you are going to see this Kawasaki sticker here just to make sure to ensure you that this is a Kawasaki engine. Now, as far as the transaxles that go on this machine, these are going to be the Tough Torque TZT7-Ms, which may not mean much to a lot of different people, but these are going to be sort of in that mid-range residential transaxle axles. These also are going to produce a top speed of nine mile an hour, which is going to be a good speed on these mowers to make sure that you're able to get those mowing jobs done fast. Now, let's look a little bit on the service points of this engine and the transaxles. So, Starting here with the engine, if we look over on the left-hand side, first thing that we're gonna see is our fuel filter tucked right back here. Then if we move up from the fuel filter right here, we're going to have that fuel pump right here. Now, this is not necessarily a service point, but if you start to have fuel issues, it's good to know where this pump is because it is an easy part to change out. So if you start having those fuel issues, that is one of the places I would look. So I make sure and always point that out in every video. Now, this is going to be a V-twin engine, meaning it does have two cylinders. So you are gonna have two spark plugs. One of those is gonna be right over here on the left hand side and then a corresponding one over here on the right hand side now our air filter is going to be right underneath that 24 horsepower sticker right on top of the engine you're gonna have two tabs here that say lift here we can raise those up see that our air filter is right there it simply has a little hand screw down here on the bottom that we loosen up take that air filter out pop in a new one and you're good to go on that now our oil system is all going to be over here on the right hand side of the engine so first thing that you're going to see is this hose here with a hand twisting end on it this is going to be your oil drain hose so you can simply pop that out move it to the outside of the machine twist that cap off and dump that oil then right back behind that is going to be your oil filter right here and then right up top here is going to be our oil fill and dipstick so this is going to have this yellow cap we simply twist that off raise it out you can see that that is your dipstick and that is also your oil fill now we we're talking about some service points on our transaxle so what we're going to have is a reservoir on each transaxle so on zero turn mowers you do have two separate transaxles one that drives the left hand side one that drives the right hand side therefore you're going to have two separate reservoirs that we need to make sure and be checking those are right here you can see that they are a semi-clear reservoir with a black cap we need to just make sure and be checking those from time to time to make sure that we're good to go now any other service points that we really need to be looking for are going to be underneath the seat so to raise that seat up we're simply going to pull back on this bar push forward on the seat and now this is going to give us access to our battery which is going to be underneath this cover right here we simply pop this off raise that cover off there is going to be your battery and also your fuse panel 
Now, one thing about this battery cover is, is that this is also going to be our service interval chart. So that's always gonna be on board for you. You can make sure to check that out. Make sure that you're doing these services when it's specified there on that interval chart. Now, while we're here at the rear of the mower, just a few more features to point out before we move to the front of the mower. For one is on the Z5 series, you are going to have a ROPS, which is a rollover protection system. It's gonna be this bar here that makes sure and keeps this machine from flipping over on top of you if you happen to roll this over. Good thing is, is that if you're in those areas where you do not need this bar hanging up high for when you're having to mow under those low lying trees, this is very, very easy to go ahead and lower down. You're gonna have two hands handles, one on each side. This is a simple, easy pull pin system that we pull out on, turn the handle, and then you are able to move this ROPS into multiple different positions here, whether you need it up or down. So that is very easy to change out. Now you're also going to have a system on this mower, like we talked about with those two transaxles, that if you do get in those situations where you need to push this mower, if for some reason you can't get it started, we're in a bad spot, need to get this mower moved, but we can't start it to turn that engine over to be able to move the machine, you will have to push this mower and you will have to release those transaxles. So what you're gonna have is a lever on each one of these transaxles that are in the running position whenever we're driving this mower, those levers are gonna be flipped to the outside. Now, if we want to make this to where we can push this mower, we simply need to flip those levers to the inside. Those levers are gonna be right down here, right in front of your fluid reservoir. So whenever they're pointed to the outside, this is for driving. If we happen to need to push it, we're gonna flip those levers in. That puts it into the motor, we can push this mower. Now, also back here at the rear on this 530R, you are gonna come with a tow hitch on this mower. This is going to be for those simple clevis style pull type attachments. So if you have, want to do such things as pull an aerator, pull a sprayer, pull a yard car, whatever those things are, you do have a hitch here at the back and you are going to have a towing capacity on this mower of 250 pounds. Now also here at the rear, you're going to have two tie down spots, one on each side to make sure that whenever you are traveling with this mower, you have those places where you can hook in those ratchet straps and be able to tie this mower down securely. All right, so now let's talk about some features on the front of the mower and also the mower deck. So what you are going to see at the front, of course, are going to be your swivel casters, just like you would have on any zero turn. Then whenever we move back here to the foot deck, a couple of nice things about the foot deck here is you are going to have the rubber floor mats all the way from the back of the base of it, all the way up onto the footrest. You're also gonna have a couple of bolt-on footrests there just to give you a couple more positions to put your feet. And also these are going to make nice handles for whenever you need to remove this platform, which is easily removable simply by lifting up, moving this out of the way so so that we can get to those things on top of the center of the deck and do the cleaning. Now also what you're going to have here is some big heavy rubber isolators on either side of that foot platform to add some suspension to that foot platform just to help with the ride of this mower and to help with any fatigue from riding this mower for long periods of time. And then right below those are going to be two of your four lights that are on this mower. So with the Z5R series, you are going to have lights that are integrated into that crossbar there at the front. And you're also going to have lights that are up here on the ROPS to make sure that you have plenty of light if you're having to do those mowing applications at night. Now, a couple other things that are gonna be at the front of this mower is you are going to have a visual sight gauge here for your fuel but you're also going to have a fuel gauge up on the display panel on the mower, which will show whenever we get into the operator station. Now, whenever we're looking at a Z530R, you're gonna have two different deck options. The one that we have here is going to be the 54 inch, but you're also going to have a 60 inch option as well. Both of these are going to be the high capacity decks, So they are gonna be a little deeper than a normal deck, able to handle more material and get that material moved in and out of the deck as quick as possible. Now, these are going to be a single piece of forged steel so they are going to be a pressed piece of steel then there are going to be no welded corners to this deck so you do not have those places for that material to build up and create moisture which creates rust so we don't have those weld spots that could be there for potential damage now with this mower it is going to be a single piece of nine gauge steel but you are going to have some weld mounts around this edging side here and along the front to add some extra strength and durability to this deck and to go along with that you are going to have three sets of anti-scalping wheels one of 
those is going to be over here on the left hand side one on the right hand side and then a set of rollers in the center these on the left hand side and right hand side are going to be adjustable to make sure that you have them at the right height depending on what height you're cutting at to keep these decks from scalping now some of the other features of this deck for one you are going to have a piece of grip tape over here on the left hand side letting you know that you can't step on this deck to get onto the mower we are going to have flip up spindle covers with easy to access grease points here on top then we're also going to have a washout port right here on the side that you can use to clean the underside of that deck then over on the right hand side we're going to have a large discharge opening with a discharge chute that covers that to keep that debris from blowing over on top of you and also with these decks you are going to be able to add mulch control to them so if you need to change this deck to a mulcher you can add that kit to where you can easily change from mulch to side discharge with the switch of a handle now let's talk a little bit about the operator station and before we hop on to the mower i just want to point out a little bit about the seat what we're going to have is this green and yellow cut and sewn high back seat with the armrest this seat is going to be adjustable fore and aft to be able to make sure that it fits those different operator height but this seat is also going to have comfort glide on it so meaning that whenever we adjust that that seat with this lever underneath to that desired position then we can move that switch all the way over here to the right and now what this is going to allow us to do is have a little bit of swivel in this seat so now this seat is going to glide forward and backward and what this does is add to the ride quality of this machine whenever we are going and driving i'm telling you that having that glide back and forth makes that ride quality really nice now if you don't want that glide to the seat you can lock that by moving that lever back to the middle position and that is going to make that seat stay in place now as far as operating controls goes and everything that has to do here in the operator station we'll start over here on the left hand side back behind what you're going to have is a storage area with two beverage holders but you're also going to have your deck leveling gauge back here that is on the machine you're also going to have this tool here that is on the machine this is going to be a 13 millimeter socket that's used to adjust multiple different things one of those things is going to be to adjust your control levers so if we look here at our control levers we're going to see that we have two bolts with two nuts and we're going to have these multiple different positions that we can put these levers in and we can do that directly with that tool that is on the mower that way you're not having to go into your shop dig around look for those tools to be able to adjust these levers you have that tool right on board this is also going to adjust our two tracking screws so right here in this front panel we are going to have one screw over here and one over here and these are what's going to adjust the tracking on this mower now if you're not sure what tracking is i've got a video going over this and how to adjust it i'll make sure to leave that down in the description below so you can check that out but basically this is what's going to adjust these levers to make sure that your mower goes straight now moving forward what we're going to have to our left is going to be our fuel tank now this is going to be a very wide opening fuel tank the three and three quarter inch opening with a four and a half gallon tank then if we move up in front of that we've already talked a little bit about our levers but we are going to have our control levers on either side here these are going to be the premium style levers that give you a little bit of curvature with a lot of cushion here so you have different places to put your hands to make sure you're comfortable when operating this mower now right below that we've talked about our tracking screw but you are going to have this orange lever this is going to be your parking brake so to start this mower we're going to have to have our parking brake up start the mower then take this off before we can pull our handles in to go and drive that mower now moving over here to our right we are going to have our height of cut adjustment this is going to be done with a spring loaded pedal to make that deck easier to lift up but we have a pedal over here on the right that we would push in then we have a pin system right here very nicely labeled where you can see cut height increments from one inch all the way up to four inch and quarter inch increments so to change that height we push in on that pedal move that pin where we want it then let off on that pedal while also pushing down on this yellow button and that is going to let our deck down and then to raise that back up we simply have to push the pedal up and that's going to lock that deck into place so to lower that deck down one more time push in on our pedal push down on our yellow button release that pedal that's going to lower that deck down now moving over here to our right here is where we're going to have our electronic display panel so if we turn this on we can see that we have a ton of different stuff that's going to light up here what we're normally going to see is our fuel gauge we're going to see our park brake button so if we do have our parking brake on that p will be lit up if we take our parking brake off 
then we'll see that P go away. We've got a battery meter over here to the right. We've got an hour meter down below. And then to the left is going to be our RPM gauge. So once we turn the mower on, we can see those bars start to light up here. You can see we have a white section and a green section. So as we raise our throttle lever up, which is right back here, this orange lever, as we raise this up, those bars are going to raise on that RPM gauge. We just want to make sure that we have that throttle lever up enough that those bars are up and into the green section before we start to actually do any mowing. Now, right below our electronic display panel, we are going to have our light switch. Then we're going to have our key switch, which has an on position, start position, and of course an off position. To the right of that is going to be our blade engagement or PTO engagement. This is going to be a simple push pull button. So we're going to pull up to turn those blades on, push it down to turn those blades off. Then back behind that, we are going to have a choke lever and a throttle lever. Now, the choke on these machines is not spring loaded. So you have to make sure that whenever you are choking this machine, once you get that machine started, you're pulling that choke lever back down. And then our throttle lever, of course, is just going to adjust that speed of the engine. Now, we are also going to have a pop out right here. We're gonna see a little square that's made into this. This is made so that you can cut this out, add another switch in. Say we're gonna add such things maybe at as a sprayer at the back. We wanna add a switch here to the mower or some other electronic component that's going to need a switch. We can simply cut this pop out out add that switch in that way it's right here easy and convenient on our control panel now moving back from that we are going to have another storage area this is going to be a covered storage right here where we can put different things maybe such things as our wallet keys phone whatever those are and then also you're going to have a 12 volt outlet in this covered storage so if you need to have such things as a phone charger on here or maybe you have one of those electric components that you don't want to wire into your battery but that has a 12 volt connection you do have that 12 volt outlet right here on the operator station of your mower. All right, so now we'll go ahead and start it up so you guys can hear how the mower sounds. We take off our parking brake. That's about mid throttle. It's all the way idled up. As you can see, just very, very simple to drive. Simply turn our levers to the left, to the right. Very, very easy. Very, very smooth. Now, let's talk a little bit about dimensions, warranty, and price. Now, as far as dimensions go, this is gonna be important so that you know whether you can get this machine in and out of the places you need to get it. So what we're gonna have is an overall length from the front to the back of 82 inches long. Then as far as height goes, whenever we have our ROPS all the way up, we are gonna be right about 72 inches. And if we fold those all the way down, we're gonna have a top height of right around 49 inches with the highest point being right here at the top of the ROPS folding point. Now, as far as width goes, like I said, we can have either a 54 inch deck or a 60 inch deck, but the width is going to be different whenever we are talking about overall width. So we're gonna have a cutting width of 54 inches, but the entire width of the deck with the shoot down is going to be closer to 68 and a half inches wide. And then with a 60 inch deck, we're gonna be looking at closer to 73 and a half inches wide. Now, the reason for that is, is that whenever we're talking about cutting width versus the actual width of the deck, you are going to have a few inches on each side. For one, you have those weld mounts on the side, and then you just have a little bit of extra room inside there to be able to process material. So a 54 inch deck is not gonna be 54 inches wide, but you can get that down a little less than the 68 and a half. If we go ahead and raise that chute up, we can drop that down about nine inches to get that to right around 59 and a half. Same thing whenever we're at that 60, if we're at that 73 and a half inches and we raise that chute up, we can get that down closer to 64 and a half inches whenever we raise that chute up. So just make sure that you know whenever you are getting into one of these mowers that that width is going to be important. If we're talking about getting in between objects, getting through gates, whatever those things are, make sure that we know those widths. Now, as far as warranty goes on this machine, it is going to come standard with a four year, 500 hour warranty. But keep in mind, you can add additional warranty to this machine at time of purchase. So make sure and ask your salesman about that if that is something that you want to add to 
to this mower. Now, as far as price goes, whenever we're looking at this machine with the 54 inch deck, these are gonna start out list price from deer.com at $64.99. Now, keep in mind, there are gonna be certain incentives. There may be discounts that you qualify for. So make sure that you're asking about these things to make sure that you get the best price you can. And also, if you're not looking to drop that entire price at one time, make sure to ask about the finance options as well. So guys, I hope this video helped you out. I hope that you liked this video. And if you did, we just you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also guys, if you are needing any John Deere parts at all, make sure to go check us out at 247parts.com. And as always guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.